So if you clicked on this video, you are most likely in the group of people that have seen of or heard of Lethal Company, and you probably have no idea what the game even is. If that's the case, then you have come to the right place. I'll put timestamps so you can go directly to whatever part of the game you are confused on. The timestamps would look something like this. The basics of the game, what the gameplay loop is, the enemies, and my final thoughts on the game, and who should play it. So, onto the basics. What is Lethal Company? Lethal Company is a sci-fi horror co-op roguelike. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Where you and up to three of your friends make an amazing choice to work for this company that cares for their employees and follows all of the OSHA regulations. But I'm kind of oh, scared. Shit. Oh, what the, there are- You'll travel to various moons together and collect scrap from facilities and take this scrap to sell to the company. All while trying to survive the various monsters that roam these planets. But be careful, if you don't meet your quota by the end of the deadline, You'll be fired, and by fired I mean being ejected, ejected into space where you'll most likely float endlessly until you meet your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, before I go further, I'd like to make two points. One, you will die a lot, but don't take that as a negative because dying is part of the learning process. You're meant to die and learn the enemies. And plus, it's funny. And two, use proximity chat. This game is designed for proximity chat. It sounds amazing, it's incredibly immersive, and, so and some enemies that are based off sound can also hear your voice, let alone your footsteps. Now that you know the gist of the game, what does the gameplay loop look like? Well, you start off in your ship and you decide what planet to fly to. Each planet has a different setting, usually being a forest or a desert with some exceptions that you can discover for yourselves. Each planet has their own unique monsters that roam around before you even make it to the facility, meaning you're not safe anywhere on these planets. Oh yeah, I don't want to forget to mention the environmental hazards such as quicksand, water, electricity, fog, and more. Yeah, it's rough work in this job. The last three planets cost money to fly to due to the distance you have to travel to get there but they can contain a lot more valuable loot that sells for a much higher price. This comes at the cost of a more dangerous environment and a higher density of lethal monstrosities you have to face. At the start of each run, you'll have $60 to spend on equipment. These items will help aid in your survival on your daily 9-to-5 workplace. This might be something like a flashlight, a ladder, walkie-talkie, shovel to whack things over the head with. Yes, you can fight back, so you're not completely helpless. You can also purchase ship upgrades and goofy cosmetics or outfits. Unfortunately, all these cosmetics are not permanent. I'll talk more on this later. You are also equipped with a base kit scanner, which can reveal items, the main entrance to the facility, and monsters. Make sure you scan the monsters you come across, as you can read about them in the beast area on the ship. This can help you learn their weaknesses and how to face them. On the ship you have a radar and a terminal. This is very, very vital to your survival, as you want a slave, or a co-worker, to stay back and give information to your team. To make this strategy effective, you'll need walkie-talkies. On the radar, you can see enemy locations, items, doors, and traps. On the terminal, you can temporarily disable traps and closed doors to seal monsters away for your team. Now, what if you're a runner, someone who is physically going into the facility? Well, you have to make it there first. You may come across roaming monsters or environmental hazards I stated, as I stated earlier. Oh, okay, you finally made it to the facility, but don't relax just yet. There may be creatures roaming around every corner. Now get your booty moving and look for any valuable scrap to sell to your company. Watch you and your friends' backs for the best chance at survival. Make sure you use your time wisely, as the darker it gets, the more dangerous it gets outside, because monsters like to come out during nightfall. If you're not on the ship by midnight, well, the ship will take off without you leaving you behind due to the dangerous environment. If a member of your team happens to perish while on the job, don't forget to drive their corpse back to the ship so you don't get penalized, losing about 20% of your currency per missing corpse. Once you and your team have made it back to the ship with any valuables on board, you can take off back to space. Now either sell your items for more money to spend on equipment, or head back down to another planet to rack up as much doubloons as possible, as you, as you have around 3 days per deadline to reach the quota. Just make sure on the last day you go to the company to sell and meet the quota or else you'll be fired. If you unfortunately get fired from this beautiful company, you are sent back to day one to do it all over again. If you're a good hardworking employee and happen to reach your quota, well, do it again, but with an increased quota. Repeat this process until you inevitably fail. That's the premise and gameplay loop of Lethal Company. If what you heard here entices you, I recommend you go play the game without seeing what the enemies have to offer. A game like this is best played as blind as possible. On to the enemies. I won't go fully in depth on the enemies, as figuring out how to counter them is a big part of the game's gameplay loop. Each enemy is incredibly unique and acts and behaves very differently from each other. Each enemy also has a specific pattern they follow, along with specific weaknesses and ways to counter them. 
if you happen to have a shovel or a stop sign, you can fight you can fight back. But in most cases, avoiding the creatures will be your best bet at survival. Also, some enemies cannot be killed, so pick your fights wisely. There are, all, there are also some enemies such as turrets and landmines. Those are pretty self-explanatory and can be temporarily disabled on the ship's terminal by typing in the trap's ID. The same can be done with metal doors. The best way to explain the enemies is to think of SCP or Final Set Freddy's. Each enemy has a specific action you have to take against them to avoid them, either being to stare at them, to not make noise, and so on. So have fun experimenting with unlearning the monstrosities. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. So, my final thoughts. First, let's talk about the pros. First off, the price point is incredibly worth it. I don't think the game is overpriced at all. I really, really enjoy this game, and I've, I haven't been immersed in a horror game like this since Alien Isolation, which came out in 2014. The main thing that sells the game for me is the voice chat. It's been the best sounding and most immersive voice chat experience I've had, like I've ever had in a game. And the horror aspect of this game is incredible. I'm not a person who gets scared of horror games or movies often, but this game really got me a good fair amount of times. And this is really surprising for a co-op horror game. Oh my fucking god! So if you decide to jump onto the Lethal Company bandwagon, expect a lot of screaming and laughing. A lot of it. Let's talk about the cons. Unfortunately, there isn't really any permanent progression. If you decide to buy a cosmetic or a goofy ship item, such as a shower, you lose it all on a failed run. But the good thing is the cosmetics are all in-game currency, so you're not spending any real money for these things. The only form of permanent progression is the beast area. It only stays per save slot. So if you join your friend's game, your beast area will not carry over. So it's not really permanent either. I can definitely see the gameplay getting repetitive after a little bit, but I would expect the average person to get a decent amount of gameplay before they get bored. And with the price point that I stated earlier, I think it's a fair amount of time you get from the game. Another issue I had with the game was sometimes the AI was really janky. Since the game is completely RNG, you can have landmines spawning in front of the main entrance door, or if you accidentally lead an enemy to the main entrance so you can escape, they might sit outside the main entrance so every time you go back in, they're right there waiting for you, which can cause a lot of BS. That's just a bit of a grime because you can take a fire exit, which is alternate entrances or exits from inside the facility so you can go around them but it doesn't mean that it's not frustrating sometimes where you just walk in and just get one shot because you were hurt already you might also get annoyed by getting put into situations where it seems quote unquote impossible but that's part of the gameplay loop you'll you'll work with your teammates and figure out how to contain enemies and separate enemies and work around them so you might feel like you're in a position where you couldn't do anything you learn how to not get put in that situation in the first place from working with your teammate who can close doors and separate enemies for you. But like I said, you'll sometimes be put in a FNAF situation where you need to do something to, for one enemy to capture him, but that leaves another enemy open because he's the complete opposite of one enemy, so. Turn off the video, who should play Luther Company? If you enjoy co-op games and horror games, you'll enjoy this game 100%. If you enjoy party games such as like Friday the 13th, Party Animals, Gang Beasts, Battle Block Theater, and you have friends to play with, you're gonna enjoy this game. This is a game for people who just wanna come home, chill with their friends, sit back and relax. It's intense, scary, and absolutely hilarious. If you wanna see some funny moments that can happen to you, check out the video in my description. This is a game where you'll play for the first time, and you'll never like have an experience like this in any other game. It's just so unique and so goofy. So I don't recommend this game to people who enjoy progression and earning achievements or cosmetics. As I said, there's no permanent progression, there's no achievements either. I wouldn't be surprised if the dev eventually does add this, add these mechanics to the game, because it's been highly requested, but the game is still in early access. So I would keep an I wouldn't put this game away completely, I would just keep it to the side, in case the developer eventually adds permanent progression to the game and achievements that you can earn. If you're coming to this game planning to play it completely solo, I wouldn't do that. I would not play this game if that was the case. This game is meant to be played with a full group of people. If you don't mind playing with randoms, then I would consider getting it. By my personal experience, the community seems really chill. I put a few random groups and everyone that I talk to are chill and for the most part, they talk and participate in the game. And just recently, kicking has been added to the game. So if people are not participating or being toxic or being annoying, you can just kick them. Or you can just leave the game because there's no penalties for leaving. Well, that concludes the video. Now you know what the hell in Luther Company is. I'm glad this game blown up as big as it got because rightfully so, this game is amazing. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if you decide to hop into Lethal Company, I wish you the best of luck. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, use this ship.